Hi, Vicky. How are you? Thank you for joining us today. Um, if you could just introduce yourself, what you do, um, and yeah. Okay, wonderful. Thank you, Anastasia, for having me. I sincerely hope that you are also well. So my name is Vicky. I'm a Canadian freelancer who currently lives in the Caribbean on a very cute, uh, bright yellow sailboat. So I'm cruising in between islands. Um, in terms of work, I have a background in high level sports coaching. So I coach teams of athletes all the way to international competitions. And then I kind of transferred from sports, more over entrepreneurship and specialized myself in mindset work. So I got NLP trained, neuro linguistics programming. I did courses in neuroscience, body language, pedagogy, really to try to, um, you know, have a solid, solid knowledge to base my teaching and my coaching of. Um, yeah, and now I host networking sessions, mindset workshops, and wellness retreats. So I've hosted a couple of retreats in the last year, and I hope to do a couple um, more here in the Caribbean on boats or on islands, remote islands, and kind of have fun with that. So that's kind of what it looks like. <laughs> wow, so you do a bit of everything then, basically. Well, I say that my area of genius is creating safe spaces where people can grow and connect through play. So I it really, everything that I do is about creating a space. Um, yeah, creating sp safe spaces, whether it's in my retreats, in my workshops, or in my networking sessions, right? It always comes down to that, to being like a gardener. So I just create a garden and I make sure that all the flowers present can grow together effortlessly. So you, um, because you're living on a boat, do you travel to places to do your work there in different places, basically? Is that how you get around, basically? Yes, that's, what, that's one way to do it. I also do a lot of things online, of course, because since COVID, I think everyone got used to doing a lot more work virtually. But all of yes. the retreats, of course, uh, I've hosted have been in person. And yeah, I use my sailboat to travel from island to island. Sometimes I, I take the plane. I was in South Korea this summer and then France for a bit. And of course, I didn't sail there. I decided to flew there. It's much faster. <laughs> so what made you like decide to live on a boat? What came up? What made you come up with that decision? Mm, oh, such a good question. Okay, so back in 2018, I went on a charter trip to the Bahamas. So a charter trip is when you hire a captain and you rent a boat to live the sailing experience for a week. And because I'm a huge water lover, so the sports I was coaching was artistic swimming. I've always been around pools. I'm a lifeguard. Um, I worked as a part-time mermaid. Fun fact, I'll send you photos later. Oh, but wow. anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'm a huge <laughs> water lover. So I thought this would be a fun vacation. So I rented this... Um, Sorry, I rented this uh, sailboat for two weeks in the Bahamas. And then I was on this boat. It was my first time on a sailboat. And I just immediately fell in love with it. Fell in love with how present you have to be. Fell in love with um, the nature, the water, the fishing, how fresh the fruits were, the vegetables, the, you know, um, making your own sushi out of the fish that you just caught is a different experience and then from that moment on I had I set myself the goal I said I'm going to live on a boat and then I committed to my goal I took many different steps in order to make this possible and then four years later I made it possible and I will live full-time on a sailboat fish my own fish make my own sushi and just living the best possible life for me that's great and how long have you have you been living this lifestyle for how many years? So it hasn't been a year yet. I became a digital nomad on June 1st. Uh, so it's been six months, I guess, since I've been digital nomad. And I've been on the boat since September because um, in the summertime, it's hurricane season here in the Caribbean. So the boats cannot be in the water. So my boat was out uh, in the boatyard. So um, when it's weather like that, you you can't stay on the boat anymore you can't live there when it's no not really not really so 
hurricane season is from July up to November, November 1st or mid-October. And during this time, it's possible to stay on your boat if you're below hurricane line or or above it. Like for example, if your boat is in the States, but um, yeah, it's a bit risky, honestly, to stay on your boat. And there's so many beautiful places in the world that if you do have the opportunity to travel around, um, which we did, which I did, I decided not to be on the boat during that season. Okay. And um, in terms of like mental health and everything, do you have yeah. like a story? <laughs> do you have like a story to share? So people sure. have like a person like a personal story or something? Mm -hmm. Yes, 100%. So I first want to say that mental health is, of course, extremely precious, extremely important. What I specialize in personally is not, I don't call it mental health, I call it mental fitness or emotional fitness, right? So I like to think yeah. that my mental health has been so good for so many years, and I don't want to settle for that. I want to become the fittest fittest person when it comes to my inner world or my relationship with myself um but yeah definitely there was a time around that first sailboat trip around 2018 2019 where I was really depressed I had a full-time job nine to five I was in a relationship that wasn't fulfilling me I was overweight um just had no purpose and then my turning point was actually when my ex-partner um ended things when he dumped me I just started to have this path of responsabilization self-responsabilization for me that was like the key that unlocked the life that I have now it was just kind of realizing how much power I have over my life and how I'm co-creating my life with the, the outside reality and starting to dream again to grow again to learn again and really improving my relationship with myself. So yeah, for me, that was the, that was the turning point. And this, that experience has obviously made you stronger and bad experiences. I wouldn't say they're even bad because you learn from them. It's kind of like a blessing because you've learned from your mistake, if that makes sense. So you can 100%. see it from a point. So you can see it from a positive way, really. Um, and when you were going through that like depression phase, did you take any medication or, or was it just natural methods? Uh, no, I didn't take any medication. I didn't really use any natural methods. Like for me, it was very much an overnight thing. My partner dumped me. I went back to my parents' house for three months, my dad's house. And then like a week later, I slapped myself in the face and I said, oh my God, like, what have you become? I just hated who I was. I hated what I was investing my time in. And then, yeah, no, no. I did get a coach at one point. I got an uh, NLP coach to support me and ask me the right questions and all that. But uh, no, no medication for me. Yeah, I guess whatever works for everyone. For anyone really um but yeah i mean you seem like you're quite a strong character anyway <laughs> yes and okay. like i love i love what you just said um you know mental health what really what really is important is to find what works for you because for one person it might be therapy for another person it might be um medication for another person it might be something else but it's really important to just hold yourself in compassion and find a path that works for you. And also love that you said, you know, negative things, we can reframe them and see them as positive storytelling. Like the stories we tell ourselves about ourselves are so powerful. And I always say, why have a good life when you can have a whole life? So I want the whole experience, not just the good parts. That's true. That's a good way of seeing it. And um, when you say that you help people change their mindsets to have a positive mindset do you think being heartbroken is a mindset thing that's a good no. question yeah wow that's an excellent question no I don't think being heartbroken is a mindset thing I think the mindset is how are you going to react welcome and accept your heartbrokenness 
You know, people forget that feelings, emotions are physiological movement. Like biologically, an emotion is actually organs in your body moving. Like it's your heartbeat getting stronger. It's your body starting to sweat. It's your, your organs feeling tighter. You know, sometimes you feel like it's a big, a big knot in your stomach, right? That's a feeling. And people need to stop saying that we can control that. That's impossible. You can't control that. It's physiological movement. What you can do is learn to welcome those signals, understand those signals, and then choose which decisions you're going to make based on those signals. So heartbrokenness is not a question of mindset. If you, your heart is broken, it's going to be broken. Your mindset is, what are you going to do about it? Yes. Yeah, so, um, okay. So how can I put this? So we say that though, your thoughts lead to your emotions leads to your feelings so you are your thoughts basically mm -hmm. so if it's not to do with a mindset then how can I put it do you see where I'm coming from yeah <laughs> so the research in that in neuroscience actually shows that it's kind of the other way around so my my five senses will get me um, inputs from my environment. Like right now I'm sitting on some rocks. I have people chatting around me in the parking lot. I have the beautiful tree inside of me and all of those bits of information are sent to my brain. And then my brain will create a feeling inside of my body. So it's going to create like discomfort under my butt right now, because I'm sitting on a rock. It's going to create like some fresh air on my shoulders. And then my brain will try to process this information that my body is sending. Okay. And then from that, yes. I'm going to get thoughts. So when you see someone at a bar that you find attractive, it's not going to be first, I have a thought, oh, this man is attractive. And then I feel attractive of an attractiveness in my body. It's going to be the other way around. You're going to feel attracted to the person in your body and your brain will go like, oh, I find this man attractive. Now, when it gets okay. interesting is our unconscious thoughts. Sometimes we have unconscious thoughts, unconscious beliefs, like I think I'm not worthy. That creates a feeling in our body. And then we have a conscious thought of, oh no, I cannot, I cannot take on this opportunity. I'm not good enough. Right. So I think that's the way yes. the thoughts kind of like feed into one another, but it really happens through the mind and body connection. Oh, that's very interesting. So you deal, you, um, you, You've studied neurosciences, basically. That's what it's called, neuroscience. Yeah, I'm exactly. I'm something Just, new. <laughs> yeah, 100%. No, I, I actually learned that in the body language class that I took. Um, so the, there's only 300 people trained in body language in the world. They're, car, they're called synergologists. And it's a science that is good, like 90%. It's accurate, sorry, 90% of the time. So it's actually a really accurate science. And... Um, yeah, that's when we learned, that's when I learned that sometimes my body gives me signals, like uh, I make movements. And then after that, I analyzed the movement. I was like, oh, it's true. I was feeling that way. But my body always knew before me. So it's quite fascinating. Okay. And um, when you've trained people, have you seen like amazing results with, with who you've trained? And yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. I think the most shocking one was maybe two, three years ago when I used to do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I don't do that anymore. Now I only do groups. Like I said, creating safe spaces for people to grow and connect through play. But when I did coaching for one-on-one -on -one in NLP, I had this nurse who had three migraines a day, three migraines a day. And she had to stop working. She was off work for oh, over girl. a month. Because, yeah, anytime she had a migraine, she would uh, get nauseous. She would have to lie down, not be exposed to light or sounds or anything. And after coaching her for a couple of sessions, we realized that the migraines always happened because she kept herself from crying. The fact that she was, like, holding her emotions inside and never letting them, like, come out whenever it she would feel. Out. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I've so the day we understood that, I know. Because yeah. if I want to cry, it just I just do it. I, um, sorry. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So I don't know. 
that's something unheard of. <laughs> yeah, well, not everyone allows themselves to feel their emotions, right? A lot of people will just store them in their bodies. Like, just think of anyone who has overcome um, trauma and they just had trauma stored in their bodies for years and years and years. Um, so, yeah, so the day we understood that, we just, I just gave her permission to cry. I asked her to give herself permission to cry. You know, she was raised in a family where you're not allowed to, to cry or to express your emotions or anything, a very stern family. So the day she understood that she was free from her migraines and she was able to get back to work. I guess people, maybe some people see it as crying is, is a weakness. Yes. Or they don't want to show their weakness. You know, they want to appear as strong and, you know, but we all are humans. We all have to let it out. Um, but what were your ways of, I mean, what is, do you do breathing exercises? What are your ways to, to help change the mindset? What exercises do you do? Activities do you do, you know, and, and how did you help her? start crying <laughs> mm -hmm. okay so there's actually lots and lots of ways to do that um yes you're right um breathing exercise can be one of them meditation can be one of them journaling just asking the right questions sometimes is enough to um get someone get someone to cry <laughs> or to you know to to change their beliefs um i love using games also like drawing, for example, I'll ask someone to draw how they feel. And then I'll ask a question and ask them to change the drawing. Um, I've also played with objects. So representing, let, let's say with objects in front of her, like what was her fear or what did her migraine look like? And then what happens right before a migraine, like working with objects. Um, there's just so many things you can do. EFT, emotional freedom technique. There's lots of free videos on YouTube. If anyone's curious about EFT, is basically tapping. So you'll tap certain uh, points um, that have nervous system connections, nervous, I'm not saying this right, but you're just tapping certain points and then you're saying affirmations at the same time. And then that usually helps release for crying. Um, for other people, honestly, there's we all have this one song that every time we listen to, it makes us to start crying. So sometimes it's crying to music. Right? I know. Yes. <laughs> I yeah. with me, I avoid listening to depressing music because yeah, I, I don't want to end up crying or being depressed. So I kind exactly. of avoid that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I feel you. I feel you. I have this one YouTube video. It's the sailing, sailing couple I followed for like over two years, and they made amazing YouTube videos. And on their last yes. video they ever made, they're announcing us that they're splitting up. And, oh, no. they, and there's this like really good uh, Patrick Watson song playing at the same time. And then I just started, I just started crying so much. And now like every time I watch this video, it gets me crying. So sometimes let's say something sad happened to me in the morning, but I wasn't able to let it out because I had a client call or a podcast interview, then I'm just gonna like hold it in. And then at the end of the day, I'll watch this video and then cry for an hour. <laughs> so so you think crying is a good thing then? Like 100%. It's, it's, oh, 100%. Yeah. Crying, crying releases cortisol, which is the hormone of stress that your body's producing. Um, it helps you regulate yourself. It, no, crying is wonderful. Everyone, everyone should cry. It's not more. a nice feeling, though, when you cry. I know it's good for you, but it's not a nice feeling, is it? When you are crying. Um, Do you I see what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I see. I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Again, I, I'm going back to. Did you see this video of? Uh, oh shoot! What's the name of this actress? She plays Betty in the Riverdale Netflix show. She was interviewed I've heard, by Jay. I've heard of Riverdale, but yeah. I haven't seen it. Yeah. So she's interviewed by Jay Shetty, and she's like, one day, you know, I was this like celestial being, being not on earth yet, and God or whatever, <laughs> or whatever you believe in, um, told me 
uh, if you had the opportunity to go on earth and experience this like myriad of emotions, would you do it? Right. And then she yeah. says like, yeah, hundred percent. And it's just such a touching video. If you can find it, it's really worth it. And um, yeah, I just kind of agree with her perspective. Like, I think all emotions are beautiful. I think crying is absolutely beautiful and anger is absolutely, absolutely beautiful. And jealousy is absolutely beautiful because it's all part of being human. And um, no, of course, when I'm, when I'm in the moment, like in the present moment, and I'm feeling really intense anger or sadness, it's rough, but then it's just part of the whole experience and, and welcoming what makes us human is I think the most important part of mental health, accepting what is present now, welcoming it. Yeah, it's true. But when we cry, we don't see it as, as like that, do we? We don't think of it like that. But yeah, I know what you mean. That's really interesting. <laughs> and um, like, so what would you say? You're, you're a coach or, or you're many things? Are you, a, um, would you say you're a specialist or? I'm a, I'm a freelancer. That's really the title I give myself because I work for many different companies. Like the mindset coaching I do for entrepreneurs is through an amazing company called Zenial Traveler, which is a business accelerator for remote businesses. Uh, when I'm a networking host, then I work for um, another business called Our League, which is a virtual co-working space. Um, so yeah, I really see myself as a freelancer. I do have 13 years plus of coaching experience, but I don't see it as my defining title. Okay. And do you have a website that, you know, the public can visit you if, if they want to join your services? So the best way to connect with me is definitely Instagram. I'm also on Facebook and LinkedIn. Um, I personally don't have a website, but the, the companies I work for, the three companies I work for do have websites, which are all tagged in my link tree in, um, on Instagram. So if you can just visit that in the bio, then you have access to everything. Great. Um, yeah. So when I post this video, I will add your links, you know, oh, thank on you. there. Um, and is there anything else that you want to share or anything? I think you've covered everything actually. I've talked about a lot of things. Yeah. I talked about, I, talk, I spoke a lot. Just, yeah. just take a moment, just take a moment to love yourself and love what it means to be human today. <laughs> yes. That's a lovely message. Thank you very much. Um, I'll just stop the recording. Thank you.